Hi, and welcome to this Dimecast about using the AF Networking version 2.0 library with the Swift language. It will help if you've seen my previous Dimecast about using Objective-C and Swift together in one project, or if you're already familiar with the basics. So far, this Dimecast series on iOS, both Objective-C and Swift, have been building on one another. So if you get lost or get behind, please go back and watch the earlier videos. As always, the source code for this and all of the Dimecasts that I author are available on GitHub if you'd rather just follow along with the code or just need to check your work. First, we're going to create a new Xcode project. I'm just going to create an iOS application, single view application. I'm going to call it Swiftly Networking. We'll make sure the language is in Swift for the iPhone. And next, I'll save it in our Dimecast folder and hit Create. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is close out. Jump to Chrome, and we're going to go to Cocoa Pods, and I'm going to look for AF Networking. Okay, here's our version. Copy it to clipboard. I'm going to pull up Terminal. Pod in it. I'll open the pod file. Paste in our networking and save close out and now I'll just call pod install and again it's going to tell us to use the workspace instead of the project from now on so we can go back to Xcode open another project we'll go into swiftly networking and we're going to open this workspace all right now that that's open you see we've got our pod so if networking's in there pull open our Swiftly networking project. And let's go ahead and add our bridging header immediately. So let's create a new file, iOS header file. And we're just going to call it, call it Network Bridge. Create it. And we're just going to import AF networking so that we can work with it. Next, we go back to our project settings. Build settings, all. If you use the search, so we've got install the compatibility header, and then this header is blank. We're just going to put that in as network bridge .h. Okay, now in our view did load. First, actually, we're going to go, and I'm going to see in the C Objective C AF networking tutorial, we use the same API from the JSON placeholder .com slash users. So I'm going to select those users, this uh, URL, to just get the list of users. We'll go back to Xcode so we can operate on them. So first we're going to get an NS URL, and we're going to make an NS URL request. Then now we're going to use, we're actually going to start using the AF networking now. We're going to set the serializer on the, uh, the response serializer on the operation. Okay, as I tried to build that, quickly I realized I made a mistake because I'd saved the network bridge right into the Swiftly networking folder. In the project settings, when I needed to do the Objective-C bridging header, it needed to be Swiftly networking, the name of this folder, slash networkbridge.h. Now when I build to just check and see how we're doing, we build and we are getting some nicer colorization so Xcode knows what we're talking about here. So now we're going to do operation set completion block with success as I hit enter to complete the blocks it didn't actually give us the helpful correct setup and, and syntax and answer so the swift way of working with blocks we have operation set completion block with success we needed to define, so here's the block. So we open the method. We're defining a block to here. And then that block actually needs a method signature, which takes those two parameters, returns void, and then this in declares the next set of code, the code itself that's going to operate. Same with failure. Failure 
This defines the entire block till here. So the first one is from here to here. The second one is here to here. And then these parentheses close the method. So it just gave us the type, comma, type. We needed to go in and, and put this operation colon, response object colon. It is very, very unintuitive. So now that I have it, we're going to say let response dictionary equal response object as array of any object. Now let's let's create our object that's going to be held with uh, with this JSON. So I'm going to create a new file. Make sure it's an iOS Swift file. Call it placeholder user .swift. In this file, I'm going to create some properties. First, we'll create the class. Actually, now we'll create some properties. Properties are set up just like that we have in the object. Because if we go back and look, ID, name, username, email, phone, website, those are the properties we're going to map. So let's create a class level method to populate those properties as an initializer. So we declared a class level method, a static method called init with dictionary that takes the dictionary and returns a placeholder user. So first thing we'll do is new up that user, return it. Now in between, oh, let me go back, fix my typo there. So one thing you'll notice right away is this is not the most intuitive syntax in the whole world. So we pass in this dictionary and the dictionary that the JSON serializer gives us back has a key, a string for a key, and then any object or an object we see that'd be like the id or the id type, any object. So first thing we have to do is cast this as any object that could be nil. And then as soon as we do that, we then cast it as a string. If I got rid of this and I were just say, just so I cast it right to string, you notice right away, string any object is not convertible to string. So that doesn't work. So you kind of have to do this song and dance, which we'll look at another way around that uh, at a later time. So let me do the rest of the properties which have a similar song and dance. There we go. We're all set up with the initializer. We build. So back to the view controller. Now that I have this response dictionary, do something with it. First thing we have to do is we're going to operate through the response dictionary, get the inner dictionary, but it's not going to know right off the bat, at least Swift is not going to know that it's a dictionary of string any object. So we're going to cast it so it does know. Then we're going to get our user using that placeholder user init with dictionary. Now that we have that user, let's declare let's declare a user's array of type placeholder user and then initialize it up here. And now that we have a user in the response dictionary, let's add to it. So we'll call self.users.append this brand new user. On failure, let's just print line the error dot description. Just so we can see what happened. Now that we've populated ourselves an array of users, let's work on printing them out. So let's create another function. Where we just go over this users array and print it out. But let's get a description on the user so we can get a nicely formatted line. So let's create this object level method that returns a string. So here we go. I'm just going to return a nicely formatted strings ID and then the self.user ID, name, self name, username, email, phone, website, and so on. Using the string interpolation uh, just helps us out, makes it really nice, makes it really easy. I get back to that view controller. So instead of user, print line user dot description, that works out very nicely. Um, so now that we have this method to call, after we do our for loop, we're just going to turn around, call self dot output users. Now all we have to do, we've declared the operation. Now let's start it. And that's all there is to it. If we run it, you'll notice down here, in our output window, 
we've output each of the users in a nice format. So in this episode, we saw how to bring AF Networking as a pod file into a Swift project. We saw how to manually create an Objective-C bridging header. We saw how to call AF Networking's API through its Swiftified methods. Finally, we saw how to parse out a JSON dictionary using Swift. Next time, we'll take a look at some networking libraries that are much better suited to Swift and written with Swift in mind. Until then.